Hi everyone, this is Arcadius and welcome back to Naval Creed. Today we will be reviewing Mogami. Now this ship is... A, you have to be kind of a pro player to play her. She has really good armament, really good speed, but she definitely has paper armor. And that is the main weakness of the ship. Now let's start with armament. You either have... you have... 15 guns of 155 millimeter, which to me are some of the strongest in the game. The secondaries on the Amato class battleships can easily score citadels on cruisers with their 155s, and the ones fitted on the Mogami class are no different. However, Mogami is special in the way that it can actually equip two sets of armament. You can either have the 15 6 inch guns, or you can equip was this 10 8 inch guns as well? It depends on your preference. Now, personally, I always go with the 155s. You have 15 shells, which are really high velocity and really powerful. And if you wanted 10 8 inch guns, then you might as well just go with Nyoko, which is at the same tier. And it comes with the same exact equipment. Now, torpedoes. She does have four sets of torpedoes that do 16,200 damage that go 10 kilometers and go 68 knots. And these are four triple torpedoes. So you have six to a side. However, the arcs for them are only rear facing, which is one of the draw main drawbacks of Japanese cruisers. However, the other one is the armor. You only have a maximum armor of 140 millimeters. That is not a lot. That is just over five inches. It's not, it may be about five and a half. So you're going against other cruisers that will just tear you apart. And if you give broadside to another cruiser or even a battleship, heck, even destroyer armor piercing can citadel you and you do not have the health to deal with it. Another drawback is anti-aircraft armament. Now, it may look like she has quite a bit, and she even comes with an anti-air defense. However, even with that activated, you maybe get three, four planes. That's all. Her speed is really good, about 36 knots. Maneuverability is relatively good as well, which is needed in order to dodge shells. The best way to play this ship is kiting, as in, the enemy is behind you and you are running away from it, and you are able to use your good gun angles and your tor rear facing torpedoes to try and do as much damage, and your maneuverability to dodge and weave in between incoming shells. If you show any kind of broadside, most ships are going to one shot you. However, the drawback is that the amount of damage this ship can output is amazing. With 15 high-velocity, high-explosive shells, it can whittle down battleships from afar. And the armor piercing is really good on this, too. Don't be afraid to, of the small caliber to use the armor piercing. With 15 shells, you can take massive chunks off of enemy battleships. And you can definitely sink cruisers in one or two salvos easily sometimes. So this ship is massively powerful, however it is also massively weak. So you have to play it without being shot at. So, now that you know how this game is, this ship plays, let's go into a game. Alright, here we have ourselves a game. Four battleships, four cruisers, one destroyer. Now, there are a whole bunch of Nelson and Rodneys in this game. And the fun thing about these is that if you're able to get the broadside of these with your armor piercing, especially in this ship, you can do quite a bit of damage. So that's what I'm just going to focus on today. There's no carrier, which is good because it does not have good AA defense no matter what. All of the cruisers here are easily citadeled if you give broadside. And Leningrad, well, it's a good ship, but not much of a threat. So we're going to go here. Now gun angles. So you have three turrets in the front, two in the rear. And this is your main 
your best angle to use all your guns. Now that is too much side. If you show this much side to the enemy, you will be citadeled and you will be sent back to port immediately. However, you can use your maneuverability to outplay. You can see how quickly it turns on a dime. And then torpedo angles, they start at about halfway and go to the rear. Now, like I said, they're just rear facing, but you, they are usable in certain instances. Other parts of the ship, you have four secondaries, however, they're not going to do that much. As you can tell, I have a bit of health buffs and speed buffs, but ignore those for now. Now, watch the velocity of these shells. It's so fast, it can even hit, for instance, this Leningrad, which is one of the fastest ships in the game, without any problem. And it's practically half health already. Now we have another enemy Omogami. Now, yeah, she's angled, so armor piercing is not a good idea here. However, that does not matter with the amount of high explosive shells you'll be shooting. Just take a look at that. 7,000 damage. Just in high explosive. There's 10 more hits and a fire. Leningrad came back. That should be her done. Let's see if we can focus this Mogami now. Now I'm giving a lot of broadside, and if you were actually playing against other players, if you did the exact same thing I'm doing right now, you would most likely already be dead. Anyone who sees Mogami usually ends up shooting at it, no matter what. And also, if I personally come across you in game with Mogami with 203, I will hunt you down with a passion, because I believe that equipping 203s on the ship is a waste of time. And I will not be afraid to tell you about it. Now, here's a good chance to show how armor piercing works. Yes, I'm getting a dangerous amount of browser with this Pepsi Cola. But, boom. About half health gone. Now, I was expecting some citadels, and I could have one shot at her. Had everything gone right. But,. 14 armor piercing shells right into your broadside. You're not gonna last long. And there you go, a couple citadels. And this next salvo should have a sunk. Boom. Switch back to the armor piercing. I'm not gonna give free damage away. And let's see where we can go from here. So those look like a couple of tasty battleships to try and snack on. Now you notice how I'm keeping my range. I'm not going close. As aggressive of as a player as I am, going close to the ship is not the best idea. Yes, your maneuverability is good, but it's not so good that you can afford to rush ships. Now you may notice I switched to AP. Watch how much damage I'm able to inflict on this run from almost 11 kilometers away with armor piercing. He citadeled her. 10,000 damage right off the bat. Boom. 7,000 more. Like I said, don't be afraid of having the small caliber armor piercing. The amount of shells you shoot and the velocity of these shells means that they're just going to go straight through the ship and do a whole bunch of damage. 6,000. And she's already gone. Now, this Nelson is way too angled. You can shoot her all you want, but you're not going to do much. Now, with your high velocity shells, you weren't able to shoot all the way out to this, at this range, and not have to worry about it. Presenting a better angle. Oh, 
I'm only getting a few. Oh, okay, now she's down. And now I'm going to see if I can get... Oh, I was going to get a little bit closer, but the Nelson on our team is fading quite rapidly, and will probably sink. So let's see what damage we can do while she's still at range and not angled. This ship excels at range. So our ship went down. However, that round is burning. And we're farming this one a little bit. I, know, but I can heal what little damage I took. 2 HP, really. Kill secure. Yeah. And I want to make sure my rear turrets are still have good angles. I could switch to high explosive, and I am kind of thinking about it, but I was expecting her to turn to the left. Or the right, I mean. Well, she's getting towards the end of the range, so let's try and reach her again. Now, I did not get a chance to use torpedoes in this game. But like I said, they are 10 kilometer. The arcs are pretty bad. But they do do a quite a bit of damage if you need them. And I have rushed ships in this before. Especially battleships. You do take quite a bit of damage if you're focused. However, if you survive and are able to get on their broadside, you can definitely one-shot them with your torpedoes. Six torpedoes to a side, 16,000 damage to a pop is pretty impressive. Now you'll notice that when I'm facing directly ahead, the number two turret is not able to fire over number one turret. You'll find similar play styles with Ibuki and Warcester. And now she's able to fire that third turret. She's back in range. And she's getting new broadside, so you know what that means. Back to the armor piercing. The guns on the ship are so good. As you can tell, high explosive does massive amounts of damage to destroyers and cruisers, and armor piercing can just mess anyone's day up. But even if you get a slight angle, it's just going to ricochet, so you need the full broadside or a weak spot in the armor. Uh, doubt they're going to reach, because they are out of range, but you never know. I lost completos. She'll go down way before any torpedoes down. But you can just see the amount of damage that the ship gets per salvo. It's amazing. And I may even want to see if those torpedoes finish her off. And there we go. Game over. Now, I'm not quite sure why that torpedo didn't sink her. I'm going to take a look at that in a moment. But, successful game. Let's see how we did. 167,000 damage. So, not much damage, but 4 ships sunk, 362 shell hits, 1 torpedo hit, 2 aircraft shot down, 3 citadels, 5 fires, 1 flood, 3 defended cap, and 10 secondary hits. How much damage did that torpedo do? It did zero damage. Okay, so it was probably already saturated. Regardless, my opinion on this ship, I love Mogami. I don't play her that often, but as you can see how much XP I have with her, she is definitely a fun ship. Now, 
I did stay at range, so I was not focused on by any means. But that one time where I was being shot at by the pep Pensacola, if he had armor piercing loaded and fired it right into my citadel here, I could have one shot at me without a doubt. These ships are really, really weak to any kind of shell being fired at them. But the, the trade off is the amount of damage that they can inflict. So, if you have what it takes to be a Japanese cruiser player, then you may really, really like her. And I personally won Mogami from a container. So, I never actually had to purchase her. And I was really looking forward to getting her too. So, I was really excited when I did. So, whether or not you purchase her is up to you. However, if you're looking for a fun ship that is OP and certain areas and overpowered in some other areas then she is definitely a fun ship good guns good torpedoes bad armor bad aa those are the main drawbacks for this ship and pros and cons thank you for watching my video and take care